Hi, welcome to Adobe Max 2023. Uh, thank you for joining us on the Adobe Live Meet the Speaker series. My name is Torin Reeves, Community Manager and Evangelist for the Adobe Express team. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our new Adobe Live channel on YouTube um, to stay tuned on like, the absolute latest, the streams, all the new features that we've got going on. Uh, it's been a wild week, so you're definitely going to want to subscribe uh, now, if, if not ever. <laughs> um, today we're going to go over some really cool new features in Adobe Express, and to walk us through all those, we've got the world's mightiest <laughs> Katrina. Uh, please introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about who you are. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Katrina Tarijos, I am the Adobe Express evangelist, um, and I also did the keynote for Adobe Express this year, this is insane! Um, but yeah, I am, fun facts, I am not a pro designer. Uh, You're <laughs> so pro I don't, now. I'm pro now, I'm pro express now, but yeah, so I just, you know, did not know Photoshop or Illustrator or any of that, just purely express, and it's just crazy to be here to help teach you all how to use Adobe Express in your creative workflows. Now, so. did you mention what team that you're on here at Adobe? Yeah, oh, the team? I'm yes. on the community team um, supporting Adobe Express. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys missed it yesterday, Katrina did probably one of the most miraculously awesome <laughs> things I've ever seen in my time here at Adobe. Um, you did an incredible job at the keynote yesterday. Can Thank you please you. recap for us what you showed off yesterday and, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the things that you found most interesting? Yeah, of course. Also, hi everyone in chat. I see some familiar names and faces. Hi, Hiba. Hi, Fergie. Hi, Audra. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so if you missed the keynote, um, basically the big thing that launched in Adobe Express is text to template. So. If you're new, you're just joining the stream, text to template is a new feature powered by Adobe Firefly where you can literally generate a template just by typing in a prompt. And it's super cool. Um, so for this stream, let's do something that I didn't do from the keynote. Let's do um, like a dog walking service flyer for pugs. I've been really, <laughs> I, I, I've just been using animals in the keynote, I use cats. Here we're using dogs. I just. I, lo I, just, I love the pet theme for I sure. I just default to animals, okay? So, uh, let me know in chat if you're if you're a dog person or a cat person, um, or if you even have pets at home. So, yeah. So, these are <laughs> the templates that popped up. Um, so, um, yeah, and these are all completely editable and layered, and you can open them in Express. Um, like, let's go with this one. This one's so cute. And basically what it does is Firefly is generating images, choosing text, colors, fonts, and putting everything into a layered template. And this is so great for if you want something super specific and unique, and you want it super quick. So here I have it opened up in Express. And we have the image here, and then we can see this is completely generated in Firefly. I can open up text to image, change the prompt here if I want, um, and then the text. Just move it around. You can even change the font. Like it's it's completely editable as soon yeah. as it loads in. Now, is that photo of the pug also generated by yes, AI? Yes, it is. You can tell because it, AI kind of tried over here. Like we have a messed up leg, but that's totally fine because, like I said, completely editable. If you kind of like the image, but maybe maybe when you do one of those things where you zoom in and you notice it has like a hidden third eye somewhere, yeah. you can <laughs> adjust the prompt or regenerate the image. So. You, you're not tied to the template that you generate, which is really, really nice. Another question for you, Fergie from the chat asks, does text to template recognize prompts for social media, uh, specifically like if you wanted to make an Instagram mm -hmm. story or if you wanted to have a, like a LinkedIn post, like can you add that prompt mm -hmm. into um, the text? Yeah, you can definitely add it to the prompt, but if we go back to the screen here, there's actually a menu here and you drop down, you can choose the type. Get out of town, there is a drop down menu. Yes. So this part I actually didn't have time to show in the keynote, but yeah, there are different um, presets right here. And so if I want to do Instagram square posts, it will give me square results. But um, if 
you can see that um, there's like only seven-ish results on the drop-down menu. Mm. If you don't see a size that you want, just open it up in Express, resize it, and you'll be good to go. Yeah, so even what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, is if the preset size for social media mm -hmm. isn't there in that drop-down, when mm -hmm. you actually load the, the template that you like, you mm -hmm. can resize from the document page mm -hmm. itself. Right. That's super helpful. Yeah. I so look at this, this one has a squishy face. Uh, uh, if there's ever an ASMR channel that I will subscribe to, yeah. it would be all pug snortles. I just think <laughs> whatever that sound is, the I'm snortles. really, really into. But you mentioned at mm -hmm. the top that uh, you don't have a traditional background uh, in being like a, a pro designer, but yet mm -hmm. here you are uh, working yeah. at Adobe, not just working at Adobe, but speaking uh, at the keynote, crushing it. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey from, from graduating from school to right now in this moment? <laughs> yeah, so my journey is was not super linear. I pivoted my career at least twice. Um, I graduated with a degree in sociology and all I was doing was making YouTube videos at the time and I needed graphics for like my YouTube banner, mm. social media promoting my videos and I did that using light tools such as Adobe Express or for the throwbacks, the OGs, Adobe Spark at the time. So that's kind of where I got my creative that's a start. And then I was in like business. I throughout my career, I did like business administration, mm. worked in the startup scene. I did some marketing here and there, but it wasn't super serious. And then I pivoted to do social media marketing, and I took an unpaid internship, um, and then did influencer marketing. And one of the influencers I worked with. Um, his old boss posted on Facebook that they were looking for a job or a social media manager, and he rec he basically referred me, tagged oh, me wow. in the post, and I applied, and I got the job, got my foot in the door at Adobe as a social media manager, and then that's 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 incredible. That's how I got in. So <laughs> I think you and I are very similar in that our, our trajectories from uh -huh. college to now aren't yeah. necessarily the traditional ones, mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, we found so much ubiquity in Adobe Spark and now Adobe Express. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not just people who don't have a background in professional design. Uh, I think Adobe Express is also really for those yeah. pro designers. Can you talk us through some of the ways that Express can benefit that mm -hmm. that C or that pro audience? The pro audience? Yes, of course. Um, but before we get into that, we have some questions from chat. Are oh you able goodness. to are you able to export and edit in design? So if you export it as so once you open it up in Express, it kind of is the same way for the exporting. So for anything for InDesign, if you want to open it in like Acrobat or anything, or you have to export it as a PDF so that all the elements are still like editable. Um, uh, can this be applied to websites? I think you can definitely make like uh, blocks on your websites. This is how I would use it. So you can't generate mm. a website or like a landing page on here. I wish you could. That would be really cool. That'd be so dope. We have you web could export, pages. Yeah, like right yeah. to, to uh, like Squarespace. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. Um, but how I would use it would, would be like I would make the text blocks of like the website. I don't know if you know what I'm talking like the the header, the hero image, and then like you know different areas. Like I would generate those here and then like put them in as images on a website. Like kind of build it out like yeah. that. So. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's actually exactly what I did when I launched my first version mm -hmm. of my own personal website. Yeah. Was I had Squarespace and I knew like what I wanted the layout to be. Mm -hmm. So I used Spark at the time to have like custom uh, image sizes and like aspect ratio so I could have my page look the way I mm -hmm. wanted it to. And that people ask me like like how'd you design your page? Like did you teach yourself code? Mm -hmm. No. Yes. I, wait. No. So back to your original question on how CPros can use it, how it could tie yeah. it all together. That's kind of what Paul demoed was he took his Illustrator file mm. and everything was layered and all that stuff. He brought it into Express to add in animations and turn it into like a video. So really to just level up his design. Mm. And he just animated certain like elements in it. I actually I think I still have the project. I can pull it up. Um, hello to my demo ass. This is the back end of my computer. Um, but we have the boba brand that we used in the keynote. And then this, these oh, were, wow. yeah, these were all the assets. They were made by Lisa McCormick. What a um, talent she is. Yeah, made by Lisa Marie on Instagram. And she did all the branding for this specific demo, for ours and the Illustrator demo. So I think that's a great way for C pros to really animate their designs, make them into videos, um, but also to collaborate with marketers as we showed in the keynote when Paul passed his project to me. Yeah. And I can open it in Express. So yeah, this was an Illustrator file that he animated on the keynote and he also threw in some videos, added a logo and like all the library's uh, assets are in here as well. So 
Yeah. And yeah. then we just dragged in everything. And yeah, I think that's really the the key for the Steam Pros to use Express. That's amazing. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for, for highlighting that. And it's um, this is one of so many new features. And I think what, in like the last three months alone, Express has completely evolved, like turned into oh, yeah. a, a whole new platform. Uh, it looks different. It's performing differently. Mm -hmm. It's got all these new features. Do you have any resources that you're particularly fond of to kind of keep users, new and old, up to date on all the new features that are, are coming and on mm -hmm. here now as of, <laughs> as of your keynote? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I would say Adobe Live is one of the best resources to stay up to date on any new features that are coming out because we stream every single day on this channel. And then also following the evangelists like you, you and then me and um, Jordan and Elise who are the Express evangelists. We post about Express almost all the time. Oh yeah, that's all I do now. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome because it's like, yeah. it, I love how many people can be served so thoroughly by oh, yeah. one platform. Um, mm -hmm. And so like being able to demonstrate the new stuff is, is great but uh, only like, I can only cover so much, so it's yeah. nice to have that wide uh, range of, of different uh, aspects yeah. and vantages pointing towards this uh, this platform that's so ubiquitous. Yeah, and there's also the Facebook group as well as the Discord. So if you really want to get connected with more of the community, more of the Express users, then definitely tap into those communities because people are creating a lot of cool stuff in there. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> speaking of, of which, not only do we have, you know, people like ourselves who have non-traditional backgrounds um, mm -hmm. and all these new resources to learn. Some of the things that you've learned in the past few months with all the new changes, how mm -hmm. has it uh, altered your workflow or your approach to creating content? Ooh. Okay, wait, clarify the question for me oh, again. Yeah, so, so, so there are all these new features ooh, you can express. Yeah, new features. How have those new features changed your approach to creating content? Okay, how has it changed my approach to creating content? Okay, honestly, I would say with all the new features coming out, um, I wouldn't say my workflow has changed so dramatically. Like I won't use text to template every day if I'm going to be honest, but I definitely love using it to explore different template styles and like, you know, different get, you know, just to get text on the page and an image on the page. Because yeah. for me, I personally, I don't like having to hit that create new button, like the, the add new text, add new image and stuff. Really? If I can have a template that already has the text blocks on the page. Really? I will do that because I'm lazy. I'm really lazy. That's so funny. I would have so, never guessed it. So I just click on the text box, change the text, and then I'll just rearrange it to wherever I want. I don't okay. know. I don't know why. I just don't like hitting add you new. Know, it's almost like you respect the template so much. You're like, I don't want to yeah. alter this. That's that's yeah. so. I'm always so interested to hear how people approach mm -hmm. their work because I love the end result. Yeah. Your journey there is equally fascinating to, to me. So it's a mm -hmm. that's a great insight to to share. Yeah. Um, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, like you said, wish my job was being an evangelist. It sounds perfect. It really is a good job. I mean, you're new this it's year. A, it's a dream job. It really yeah. is a dream job. It's a dream job. I don't know about sure. you, but I feel really aligned with what I do. Like, I thought I wanted to be a social media manager for the longest time because I loved posting. But, like, for me, I also really like being the creator of it. And, like, you know, social media started to feel like a hamster wheel, kind of. Yeah. But I really do like the creation process. And I also really love teaching and being on Adobe Live and going to universities and stuff. And I think that's really where my heart is, is just teaching folks how to be creative and how to use the tools. Yeah, I, th I think that that's the one through line between all the evangelists is that shared passion for educating others. Mm -hmm. I think what makes us unique is that we all have our own very bespoke approaches to educating and mm -hmm. not just how we educate, but who we really are most optimized to educate. Yeah. And so like, uh, like, like you said, like I feel so aligned with what I'm doing because I'm so passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. So doing that and exemplifying the sort of lessons that I, I hope to communicate through the work mm -hmm. has been, been a real, real blessing for sure. Um, Audra Campbell asked, can you make templates for others to use in Express? Yes, you can. So with the thing that Paul demonstrated, he was able to share this template with me and it's super easy. Oops, it's super easy to do that. All you have to do is hit share and then go to invite collaborators. So this will invite people to the actual project. So that's one way to share. The second thing is to publish to web, so that'll create like a shareable link um, that you know it's view only, but you can like people can still see the project. Or if you press the three dots, you can select make it as a template. 
So this will make the project into like a template that you can share out with people and people can remix it and mm. it won't mess up the original. So you just give it a name, you choose what library it's going in or create a new one and then hit save template and you'll be able to share it out. That's amazing. So when you, a uh, question about the shareable link, yeah. when you share that, um, does it update in real time with the edits that you're making or are you just sending like a snapshot of the most mm -hmm. recent version? It's a snapshot, so okay. it's a copy. So whatever you do, you'll have to update the template link and Got stuff it. like that. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes it so, uh, for somebody who has a background with servicing clients, yeah. I used to dread sending them versions of things, especially if they were live, because yeah. they would tinker, and like you would never know, like, wait, what did they change? Like, how do I get this back to where it was? Yeah. Um, so it's nice. There was a feature that I think Paul demoed yesterday, okay. uh, or you both demoed, where you were locking certain aspects or certain elements yes. of the document. Can you walk us through that, please? Yeah, okay, so let's start over here. I'm gonna lock it and unlock. Okay, so one of the features that was really highly requested was to lock features, uh, or features, lock assets on the page or to lock a template because, you know, stuff can be accidentally moved around, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of designers don't really dig that. Um, so uh, we added the locking templates thing. So you just click on the asset and there's a lock button right here. You just hit lock and then from there you won't be able to move it at all. Like, I'm trying, I'm just, it's not going. It's not going. Um, but what I didn't show on stage, because it would have messed up the story, was hmm. I can unlock it. <laughs> so, yeah, the you can definitely unlock the assets and move things around. Um, but what the story that Paul and I demoed was something's brand approved, it's locked. He sends me the template. I see that it's locked on the template, so that signals for me to not move anything around and not mess with that. So that's what it is. But you can unlock the assets if you would like. Got it. Mm -hmm. So this page right now is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Yeah. If you wanted to resize it for mm -hmm. different placements online, mm -hmm. what's the process for that? Would you have to make a brand new page from scratch and then do resize? Or can you go from having a selection of different Mm -hmm. preset sizes for uh, like the placements that you're hoping to, mm -hmm. to flight this uh, creative to? Yeah, yeah, so for the resize, it's super easy. Um, you just hit resize and you can put in the custom size. And then there's, I wasn't kidding when I said on the stage, there are a lot of presets. Do you remember having to do this <laughs> five years ago? There's a where, lot like, of if presets. You, if you had a, like a unique placement, you'd have to Google like, mm -hmm. what's the Instagram? Like, what are all the different placement sizes? Yeah. And whatever the first four results were, they were never correct. Yeah. Like, to, like not have to think about the aspect ratio ever mm -hmm. again is such a blessing. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yes, and then I ha I would have the the little there's like an overlay on Google Images mm. that had like a little cheat sheet of all the sizes, and I would have it pulled up on the page and like measure everything down. And oh then yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Those those are the those are the those rough were the, days. It would take forever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then from here you just select whatever ones you want. So like I did these Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, and then these two, and then that's it. You have every size you need. And, and talk us through this resize because yeah. there's elements here that mm -hmm. weren't there just a second ago. How okay. does it How does it do that? What do you mean, how does it? Like, like for elements? the wide version oh, of it. Oh, so it all comes from how the asset was built. So Got it. Paul actually had it, This the real image is actually really big. Oh. And so the canvas just stretched. That's amazing. And so you'll so you can see in this one in particular, the sun ends. But the original asset was like built out to be like bigger. So, yep. But instead of like, because I've done some resizes um, in the past on different applications that when I went to resize, it only resized like the canvas, but not the mm -hmm. artwork within it. So I still had a one by one creative that was now in like a 16.9 mm -hmm. sort of template. And I'd yeah. have to manually yeah. stretch those things out. So it's really nice that there's way less mm -hmm. massaging now in that process of changing aspect ratios for placements. It just saves so much time. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for the community and being such a active participant in the development of this yeah. version of Express, because you can tell that Adobe really listened to like, where are those pain points coming from? Yeah. Uh, and how can we help ameliorate those with having options that are really easy to use and, mm -hmm. and really consistent with the results? Yes. Okay, we have some questions. Let's 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 read them. So we have a, a question from Wade Acuff. Uh, or no, he was highlighting a question. Yes. Can you 
demo how to make a template. Yes, so how to make a template. So taking this for example, um, let's say I want to export this as a template. I go to the three dots, hit make a template, and then say uh, boba on the beach. And then I choose a library, so let's put it in Boba Fest, hit save template, and boom. Is there a limit There's to how many libraries you can have? I don't think so. Okay, whatever perfect. Clouds, whatever is your cloud storage, <laughs> I think that's what it is. And then from there, it'll be in the library. So it should be down here. Yep. All and the templates are saved here. Another question that I'm seeing from the chat is, um, are there accessibility features in Express, or mm -hmm. if Express ex supports accessibility features, especially alternate mm -hmm. tags? Yeah, okay, so for accessibility, with alt text, I don't believe there's any features in there quite yet, okay. wink, wink. Um, but we do have an add-on that does help with accessibility. Like there are some, um, there's one in particular, what is it called? It has to do with, I think it's color blindness, color blindness simulator. So what this add-on does, it basically like runs your design through different types of color blindness. If you can see on the right hand side, and you can see what your design looks like to folks with color blindness. This is, uh, this is so cool because mm -hmm. like you never want anybody to feel alienated by the work that you're doing. So just yeah. to have like an audience that, you know, unfortunately, like to be honest, like I don't know if I would have had the awareness to stop and go, okay, am I making mm -hmm. sure I'm doing everything I can to speak to as many people in a way that's effective to them mm -hmm. as possible? Having like these check-ins built in, yeah. it's uh, it's super empowering. And can you walk us through the add-ons? Because until mm -hmm. yesterday, I had no clue that this was a <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, so these add-ons are basically here to like supercharge your workflow. Supercharge. So, supercharge, yeah. So there's integrations like with Google Drive, Dropbox, so if you store stuff in there, you now can access those assets. And there's things like making a quick QR code. Um, oh, they actually added a lot of add-ons. There's actually so haven't. many. Yeah, there's icon generators, there's brand fetch, so if you need logos from a brand, put it in for like a media kit or something like that. Can you select you the icon generator, players? Because I, uh, I genuinely cannot overstate like I almost <laughs> cried yesterday because how many times have you needed like a brand logo for something mm -hmm. and you're like I'm gonna go to Google and type in PNG and the brand and it's logo not a PNG. and it's not a PNG that but it still it still has the checkerboard as if it were that has happened it's insidious to insidious and it should be outlawed. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm see, outraged. So I pulled up all the Adobe logos here. So like this is the brand fetch add-on. So definitely check out the add-ons. There's a it's a bunch of fun surprises there. Like, I need to go back and do my homework. I literally, like, I bet you I make my <laughs> workflow so much more tedious because I'm mm -hmm. not, like, actually getting the most out of these add-ons. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to spend some serious time in the weeds here. We've mm -hmm. got another question from the chat, though. Uh, yes. If I start my artwork originally from Adobe Express, can I edit it in Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator to edit each layer? You can if you export it in PDF. I, didn't, I, I, I genuinely did not know that. Yes. I'm so glad you're here because I would have read that question <laughs> and I would have said no. Yes. And then <laughs> everybody would have been misinformed. No. So. Yeah. But I think. Yeah, I think that's all the questions and the time we have. Yeah, today. I think I think that's it for us. But thank you so much, not just mm -hmm. for this session, but for being such an influence on me personally for representing uh, all the the brown creatives from non-traditional backgrounds on the stage yesterday. Yeah. Um, that really is a huge milestone, and for mm -hmm. taking that on and being the first, your, you, your performance yesterday yeah. ensured that there will be a second, third, and fourth, and I don't think I can thank you enough, so uh, thank you so much. Yes, of course. It was such an amazing experience to do the keynote. First time ever, and I just, I remember five years ago, I was in the audience as a contractor just being like, I don't know if I would ever be there. And then my old manager was like, it. we're getting you up there. And then I was like, nah, sure, whatever. You and then it. now I'm here five years later. So it's been a really great experience. And I can't wait to see what else Max has in store. Yeah. Well, we will see you guys. Take care. And if you see us out and about in the showroom floor, please approach us and uh, ask us your questions. And, and we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Subscribe. Bye.
ました。